the pirates. Hit the accelerators, girls. The men are already downing ships and they've barely even started. If we don't want to look like complete chumps compared to our husbands, we need to make some trail. Agenda orders as she's back in the captain's chair where she belongs. Suffice to say, Vuxa is protected? Vuni asks. I'd like to think that these idiots will need to be protected from Vuxa and not the other way around. Agenda replies and the career politician snickers. Very well, I'll leave the application of violence to you and yours. I'll keep everything working as smoothly as possible as you. Where is our husband? He is safe in the main base. It has its own dedicated shield and point defenses and is surrounded by his team. Do remember he's a soldier though, so he's already been striking at the enemy with the help of the adept Franklin who's already let him and his friends knock out the main power of one of the five ships attacking us. Really? Oh yes, much like Vuxa itself. These slaver bitches need to be protected from him rather than him needing protection from them. I see. So that explains why you're racing forward as hard as you can. After all, it would be a rotting shame if ten men somehow get ahead of hundreds of hardened pirates. My, you might never live it down. A girl can live a long, long time if she isn't outright murdered, Agenda says before grinning. Girls, how much longer until we're in boarding range? Twenty seconds, Captain. Vuni, I'd love to keep chatting, but I've got a war, or maybe more of a race to win. Excuse me. Agenda says with a sharp toothed grin as she kills the connection. Mercy, Jin, are you both ready? Two panels light up, one showing Mercy sealed in her power armor with a huge grin, and Jin with a deadly serious look on her face and her entire upper body painted to look like a monochrome demon. We're ready, Mercy says with anticipation dripping from her tone. Jin merely nods. Good. We're going to be in range any moment now. First, we'll be deploying the second, then first squadrons to capitalize on the surprise we've still got. What of the men? How are they doing? Jin asks plainly. The emotion kept out of her voice. They've already pulled ahead and disabled one of the ships. They're fine. I'll be telling them which ones we're already attacking so we can properly spread out the pain. If all goes well, this whole invasion should be wrapped up before the hour's up. All but the looting, I should hope, Mercy remarks and Agenda giggles before nodding. Sounds fun. I'll be chasing my little man and pouncing on him when this is done. Party when we've won. Do not assume victory, assure it. Jin answers Mercy's excitement. We're in range. You heard the lady, Jin, you're first out. I want that ship with a bow on it. Agenda orders, and the Nagasha nods. Launch confirmed. Second squadron has made contact with the enemy ship. Then move on. We need to get to our second of three targets and it's not coming closer, Agenda orders. Captain, I think they're finally catching wise. They're trying to move away. Adjust then, match their headings and intercept. She commands and refuses to elaborate more so as not to confuse the helmswoman. The men have dropped one of the ships and it'll be a wonderful bit of salvage, but she wants at least two of them fully intact. She monitors the tactical situation from her command couch and all the data readouts she can easily read over the heads of her crew below her. She processes everything and makes a few adjustments with her controls. The girls are good and never panic, but they don't have an eye for the finer details that can really make or break a space battle. One little burst of energy or a few degrees are all the difference between being dead on target and missing by such a wide margin that if not for the emergency beacons in the boarding torpedoes, there'd be no chance of finding where they misfired their troopers to. Captain, I'm not detecting much in the way of point defense here. Whoever these girls are, they are not expecting a fight. At all, Hani says, and Agenda nods. Of course not. They came to Vuxa expecting a planet that already shredded most of its communication pylons itself. They were expecting the gangs eager to feed their rivals to them, not us. She remarks calmly. These ships are immensely specialized, much more than her claw. Too much so. 
She had sacrificed some of her main guns in exchange for a large number of boarding torpedo tubes, but had kept some on in case she couldn't send raiding parties into the enemy vessel. Couple, that with its oversized engines and moderate but not overly powerful, shields and she had a fast and mean ship that could harry much larger foes. These big beasts are designed for abduction and planetary bombardment. Huge, powerful, down-facing cannons for laser and plasma blasts from orbit. They have little, if any, ability to be aimed beyond moving the ship into position directly over the target. Captain, we're in position, Hani calls to her. Mercy, did you catch that? Time to play! Agenda sends and receives a cheer of excitement from the Fruit Sonier warrior. For all her inability to eat meat or even vegetables half the time, the woman is cheerfully bloodthirsty and wonderfully game for chaos. Between the two of them, Jin keeps everyone in line with fear, but everyone likes mercy. The balance really worked. We've got contact. First Squadron is inside the enemy ship. All right, girls. We're going to be giving out some precision strikes on the third ship to shut off its main cannons and engines. Jin Gay, relay the information of what we're hitting to the boys so they can focus on the last one. Racing may be fun, but the important part is winning. K, this, that, that, and that, and that, and send, Jin Gay says with a little shake of her rattle with each word. She then nods and lets out a kissing sound. Hubby's getting all of it. Good. Take us in, girls. Verica, you girls on the plasma and lasers ready? Agenda demands, bringing the gunners online. Ready and waiting. Paint the targets. Focus on their engines above all else. They're not getting away, Agenda orders. Got it. Love that they're attacking and we're not letting them run. Ha, Verica remarks. They definitely know something's going on now. A lot of communication back and forth between the ships. Hani remarks. I was wondering if this would have some challenge to it. No reason to give them a win, though. Activate the jammers. I want them scared, confused, and paralyzed with indecision. Uh, Hani begins, an agenda mentally berates herself. Too much useless information had confused the Drin. Just turn the jammers on and match the frequencies, Hani. That's your main concern. Agenda says simply, and she pokes a few controls to bring up several more data points to keep an eye on with Hani, focused on keeping the jammers on frequency. Targets in range. Verica cheers as they reach the mere hundreds of kilometers in distance, and from the readouts, Agenda can see that there's a lot of enthusiasm in the firing solutions. Thankfully, it starts to go into proper volleys to give each gun enough time to prevent overheating. Sure, the Axiom arrays bleed off the heat in a hurry, but what should happen in battle and what does happen in battle are different things entirely. Wow, they're desperate. They keep switching frequencies to try and talk to each other. I guess they don't know what to do if they can't talk. Hani notes. That's just bad coordination. Agenda notes with a sniff. Engineering, how are we doing? Snoring, Captain. We finished a tune-up not three days ago. Unless there are severe breaks in our own sensors or a ship-wide communication, then there's nothing to do but stand by and wait for a problem to fix. Mabby sends up. Although to be frank, when things get exciting down here, it's not a good thing. Great. Philosophical problems. Give me something I can solve with a wrench any day. Head in the game, Mabby. What's our power levels? Input is at maximum without overdrive. Output is a 68%. We've got enough get up and go for a few emergency bursts before we have to really start yanking on the local axiom, Mabby says. Although the plasma levels are going down bit by bit, we've got Vuxa nearby, meaning we can easily refill the plasma levels with just a quick flick of the scoops. Good. Tell me if anything starts changing. Agenda says, and Mabby nods before the screen winks out. Hey, Captain, Mercy asks as a screen with her face shows up. We got ourselves their commanders well and truly captured. You want them alive or dead? If they can be easily contained, alive. If not dead, 
We may want to know where they came from, but bitches like this have egos so dense they have their own orbit. There will be journals, secret notes and recordings of them monologuing all over the place. It was one of the things that took down the original Dark Cabal. And if these idiot fangirls are following in the same footsteps, you can bet entire stacks of discs that there's going to be some idiot that makes the same mistakes. All right then, we've been stunning everyone nonstop. They really don't have good internal security. Pain lashes and prodders are the most common things they're packing. They really weren't ready for armored opposition. Mercy remarks then smiles widely and suppresses a laugh. Although there is some entertainment when we ran into a desert Nagasha who had a whole six pack of activated pain lashes, wrapped herself up in the damned things when I got her with the stun cannon. Hey, there's a, oh hey guys, one of the girls near Mercy says, and Mercy starts before sighing and shaking her head. You need to see this captain. Mercy remarks and the view is shifted to the external camera on Mercy's armor. There's a hole in the air, and Takata Ryu is standing there with a hand on a sword tucked into his belt and overlooking the situation with an amused grin. What are you doing? Mercy asks him. Decapitation strikes. I was thinking about being very literal about it. Ryu explains flicking his sword partially out of its sheath with his thumb to demonstrate. We've been concentrating on taking out the leadership as they're basically feeding us their adepts and you girls no doubt have the ships covered. An Arumenta pokes her head in and looks around in shock. You weren't joking. This is insane. They seemed so powerful and unstoppable. How are you ripping them apart so easily? Raging maniacs can seem pretty scary when they attack unprepared civilians. But going after military targets or career criminals, they just get taken apart no matter what kind of toy they have. Miles says, stepping through to stand beside Ryu. I must admit, I'm a little disappointed. Everyone else is getting their little moments of fun and gun. Is there a problem with swords? Not enough range? Miles asks. Why did I ask a sniper about melee combat? Ryu moans in a joking tone. Ryu, you know I'd love nothing more than to peel out of this suit and take you on the twitching bodies of our enemies, but now is not that kind of playtime. Mercy purrs and Agenda groans into a paw. Focus, girl, you're raiding an enemy ship, not role-playing with your husband, remember? Agenda reminds Mercy, who openly scoffs. Oh, so Agenda's watching? Miles asks. I am. Go for the fourth ship. We've got these three. Okay, but one thing you should know is that there's not going to be a lot of immigration. A lot of these girls were recently taken from their homes and want to go back, according to all the adepts that keep trying to jump on Franklin. And how is he handling being attacked so often? Agenda asks, just as there's a cheer from the other side of the open portal coupled with some mocking words in the human language of English. Considering that he apparently just Suplexed one of the more aggressive ones, I'd say he's having himself some fun, Miles says with a smile that makes Agenda want to reach through the screen and touch him. She tamps down on it for later. Anyways, you've got this ship under control. We'll check on the next one. He then steps through the portal with Ryu following after blowing a kiss towards Mercy and the Aramenta gives them one more incredulous look from the other side as the portal closes. Well... It seems I should check in on Jin now. Agenda notes and Mercy giggles. No kidding. Goddess damn, they move fast. I need to up the pace and bring this bitch of a ship down and under our control yesterday at this pace. Mercy notes as she closes the connection. Jin, come in. Status report. Conflicted. My husband stepped through a tear in the space-time continuum in an unusual dress style spoke in an incredibly thick accent riddled with slang and killed the enemy captain even as we were attempting to siege our way to the bridge, Jin reports factually. The siege became much easier after that point and we now have control of the main bridge with the slavers in charge having surrendered, requesting orders. Bring the ship down and secure it in a starport. It's ours now, Agenda says, 
and Jin nods before closing the connection. She then rescans the readouts and catches things just in time for one of the main cannons of the enemy ship to go offline. The fifth one is starting to turn away and she pulls out her communicator. Hey honey, mind targeting the retreating ship? I want to make sure we've got a clean sweep, okay? Sounds like a plan. Hey Franklin, we're going for the furthest out ship. It's starting to retreat and we want all of it. Miles answers calmly. On it, Franklin says, and there's the sound of something slapping something. Ow. Caught a piercing in the webbing. Oh, boo-hoo. Suck it, soldier, and hook us up with the portal already. Give me a second. This ship hasn't sent as many aeromenta, so the signal's a little less clear. Franklin responds. 